everyone. Um, welcome to today's brief overview of the end of cars stage one transition from CEDAR to CORA. Today, we're going to focus on what practitioners need to know. We're fortunate to be joined by Harry Vickstead, who is a senior policy director at the Bank of Canada, and Carl Wiley, who is vice chair of CB CIBC. Harry and Carl are also the co-chairs of the CAR. So I'm going to turn it over first to Harry and then Carl to quickly walk through the CDOR transition and an update on where we are, and then we'll jump into some questions. Thank you, Anne. The two-stage transition plan was developed by CAR for, for industry. CAR represents 22 institutions plus the Bank of Canada covering the various stakeholders impacted by the cessation of CEDAW. The 22 industry members are evenly split between the buy and sell sides, including representation from non-financial corporates. The Canadian authorities are also well aware of the transition and the various milestone dates. They are briefed on a regular basis to its progress. The first stage ends on June 30th, after which new derivative transactions should have transitioned to CORA with limited exceptions, which we'll cover in a few minutes, i.e. there's only just over two weeks to the end of stage one. New cash securities are also expected to reference CORA after this date. The second stage ends with a cessation in the publication of CEDAW on June 28, 2024. It allows for an extra year for the loan market to transition from CEDAW and for market participants to incorporate robust fallbacks into contracts if they don't already have them in place. Carl will now walk through the, the various milestones. Thanks, Harry. As stage one comes to an end, I am pleased to report that the CEDAW transition is on track and on time. Over 75% of derivative transactions are now referencing CORA, and this has been helped by setting milestones and communicating them widely. Our two CORA first dates on Jan 9th and March 27th helped to transition the interbank market and the rest of the market has followed suit starting in earnest at the end of March. We are now in a unique place where we have liquidity in both CEDOR and CORA swaps and CAR encourages all those who need to transition to do so while that window is open. One and three month CORA futures are taking longer to supplant BAX futures, but that was expected. And we believe there will be a sea change following the June expiry. In securities or FRN market, CORA has been the predominant benchmark for several months now. So that transition is proceeding smoothly. CAR is about to publish a paper on legacy securities which highlights that there are very few tough legacy securities and that those um, and for those we have published a recommended remediation consistent with the CAR recommended fallback. The development of term CORA is well underway. The benchmark administrator is Candeal and their partner TMX will be responsible for licensing term CORA to those banks who will use term CORA in their products. A beta version will be published by the administrator in July, and official publication will begin in September. Remember that the use of term CORA is constrained. In short, it will be used for loans, derivatives that are associated with loans, and trade finance. It is not permitted to be used as a benchmark for securities, in securitizations, or in derivatives not associated with loans. And as Harry said, stage two will focus on transitioning the CAD loan market. To ensure readiness, we urge all loan arrangers and borrowers to ensure their loan agreements have robust fallback language hardwired into their loan documentation. We do not recommend the amendment approach. CAR has provided the recommended fallback language and it is available on the CAR website. We'll be publishing a detailed paper discussing the remediation of CEDAR loans together with the recommended conventions next month. Now back over to Anne for some Q&A. Thanks, Carl and Harry, for those great introductions. Um, so jumping into a few questions, Harry, can you expand on the kinds of transactions that are allowed after the end of stage one, so after June 30th of this year, 2023? 
Uh, absolutely, Anne. Uh, CAR published a market notice on Friday, June 9th, uh, specifically reminding market participants of the activities referencing CEDO that will still be permitted under CAR's transition plan after June 30th. Uh, these include new lending activity that references CEDO. Uh, as Carl mentioned, uh, CAR is currently discussing adding a no new CEDO lending milestone date similar to what was done with sterling and US dollar LIBOR. Uh, and as Carl mentioned, the date being discussed is November 1st, after which no new CEDO loans would be allowed to be booked. We expect to provide more information on this in the coming weeks. Um, the other uh, type of transaction is uh, securities market making activities relating to those CEDO related securities issued prior, prior to June 30th. Uh, will also be allowed. Um, as mentioned before, new issued securities are expected to reference uh, Quora. On derivatives, the exceptions uh, include uh, derivative transactions that hedge new or existing CEDO related loans or existing securities. Uh, those derivative transactions that reduce existing CEDO risk. Uh, derivative market making activities that reduce a counterparty's existing CEDO risk, or uh, hedging of CEDO exposure embedded in structured products issued pr prior to June 30th. Uh, risk reducing in this context uh, refers to transactions that reduce the overall sensitivity of a firm's assets or liabilities to CEDO. Note that re, uh, reducing the CEDO risk for clients may increase the CEDO risk for market makers. And also to be clear, CEDO can continue to be used to calculate payments on loans, securities, and derivatives issued prior to June 30th. Thanks, Harry. Um, is this June 30th, 2023 timeline applicable to all market participants? And how are you ensuring that the date is binding? Uh, yes, uh, CAR, which is co-chaired by the Bank of Canada, expects all market participants to abide by the June 30th milestone date. Um, however, to ensure that this date is binding, uh, OSFI published its regulatory guidance with respect to the transition and this guidance fully aligns with CAR's recommended transition plan, including uh, the specific dates. Um, OSFI will be monitoring the transition as it, as it applies to these dates, similar to what they and other uh, regulators did with US dollar LIBOR. We expect that banks will have processes in place to ensure that any client, client transactions done after June 30th aligns with CAR's allowable exceptions. Uh, this was similar to what happened with U.S. dollar LIBOR transactions after December of 2021. Thanks, Harry. Um, turning to Carl, maybe you could expand on hedging legacy transactions, or that is, those transactions entered into prior to the end of the month, so prior to June 30th, 2023, that have contingent CEDAR risk with CEDAR-based swaps or BAX futures after June 2023. So those transactions that are structured in nature and create contingent risks that with market movements will create um, risks that need to be hedged are allowed to be hedged using CDOR swaps or BAXs in, in regard to um, uh, under, uh, hedging that underlying risk. So whether that's in a structured transaction that is bilateral or structured notes, that will be an allowable use case for CEDAR uh, swaps or CEDAR underlying instruments. And what about hedging legacy CEDAR swap fixings and resets with BAX futures or short dated one and three month based um, CEDAR basis swaps? So similar to my answer to the last question that as reset risk move around with market movements that Hedging using backs, backses um, around resets is allowable. Um, and so dealers that uh, that have reset risk can hedge using backs futures. And so that may increase risk, but um, but ultimately that is allowable under the car guidelines. 
Okay. Um, sticking on this topic, but turning back to Harry. Harry, you mentioned that derivatives includes exchange traded derivatives. So what does this mean for BAXs and will they continue to trade until June 30th of next year, 2024? When we talk about derivatives, Carl was very specific in, in mentioning that uh, uh, derivatives included uh, over-the-counter bilateral and clear trades, as well as exchange-traded uh, transactions. Um, and OSFI's guidance, regulatory guidance, uh, aligned exactly with that definition of derivatives. So the June 30th transition timeline affects interest rate futures and swaps identically with both types of instruments expected to transition their new activity from CEDAW to CORA after that date. So after June 30th, market participants are expected to only trade CORA-based swaps and, and futures except for the uh, exceptions uh, that we've outlined uh, earlier. Uh, the Montreal Exchange is expected to consult soon on a conver conversion process for those uh, BAX futures, uh, uh, as well as the date. Uh, and this would be similar to what the CME did with the euro dollar futures uh, earlier last year. We expect that the conversion date will take place sometime in Q2 of 2024. Um, however, BAX futures will continue to trade until that date, subject to the restrictions outlined earlier. Thanks, Harry. Um, Carl, are dealer banks permitted to take a holistic approach to reducing their CEDA or exposure across a portfolio of products or business lines, or are they expected to look at um, risk reduction on a trade-by-trade -trade basis? And thanks for the question. No, um, banks um, are not expected to uh, approach a holistic view to risk reduction relative to CDOR. It should be done on a desk level basis. And so the overall guidance from CAR is that past June 30th of uh, 2023, that risk reducing trades um, are permitted. And it is understood that a dealer's transaction in hedging a risk-reducing transaction for a client may actually increase their risk, but the philosophy with the trading desk itself must be risk-reducing when entering into a transaction um, for their own book. Thanks. Um, jumping back to Harry, is the June 28th, 2024 date announced by RBSL to cease publication of CEDAR firm or could it get pushed back? Thanks, Anne. Uh, there will be no change to RBSL's announced date for the cessation of CEDAR. Based on the successful transition so far of the derivative and cash securities markets, and the relatively limited tough legacy problems, we should be in a good position for the second stage of the transition. Okay, that's very clear. Um, since there is no flexibility with that end date, is Canada looking at either the synthetic CEDAR option, which has been used in UK legislation, or a legislative solution like we have in the United States? Uh, no, neither option is on the table in Canada as the tough legacy issue is relatively small. Um, that being said, we will be publishing CARS recommendations on how to deal with our tough legacy contracts soon. Okay. Um, thanks, Harry, once again, clear. Let's jump back to Carl for a final question. Um, could you update us on CARS recommendations for CDOR fallbacks? Sure. So after June 28th, 2024, that any reference to CDOR will have to follow fallbacks. And I'm going to thank you and the folks at ISDA for having a robust fallback um, uh, regime and protocol related to counterparties falling back on their derivative transactions. CAR, as well as the Canadian Securities Administrators, recommend that all market participants sign the protocol. If they don't sign the, sign the protocol, um, please ensure bilaterally that you have appropriate fallback language for your derivative transactions. For cash securities, Harry 
uh, highlighted that there will be more information coming out relative to legacy cash securities. Those that do not currently have a um, satisfactory fallback language need to amend their documentation to ensure that they have appropriate fallback language for uh, any payments that that um, take place after June 28th, 2024. Um, CAR will be, as Harry said, recommending um, language in that regard, um, but it is for issuers to remediate any um, contracts that do not currently have appropriate fallback language. Thanks, um, Carl and Harry. Um, before we close, any final messages either of you would like to share? And what I would say is that what we've talked about today is uh, part of a frequently asked questions um, publication that CAR will be putting onto the CAR website uh, soon. And uh, and uh, we encourage all market participants to keep tabs on the CDOR transition on the CAR website. Um, <clears throat> there will be, uh, as Harry said, a uh, publication related to legacy securities, as well as for uh, the loan market transition for phase two. Stay tuned. Uh, and if there are any additional questions from market participants, they can be emailed to, to car at car-wg at bankofcanada.ca. So, so if there are any uh, questions with respect to any aspects of the transition, please uh, reach out to car. Thank you, Harry, and thank you, Carl. So um, email your questions to the address that Harry mentioned and be sure to look out and keep up with the FAQ document that Carl mentioned. Thanks again to both of you for your time and good luck, good luck in the coming weeks and over the final year of CEDAR. Thank you. Thank you, Ben.